It's pretty wild how flippers have been capitalizing on market shifts to sell off valuable items, especially Rolex watches. Prices and trends can change in the blink of an eye. Lately, things have been all over the place with extreme ups and downs. There have been some players who managed to hold their ground. So what's really happening? Let's discuss facts, shall we? Before things slowed down, the watch market was going wild due to imbalance in supply and demand, the crypto frenzy, and supply chain issues. Watches like the Rolex Daytona were sold for almost double their retail price. Auction houses set new records almost every day, and flippers were buying these hyped-up models thinking they could make quick bucks. But you know what they say, that madness couldn't last forever. With buyer fatigue setting in, the collapse of crypto, inflation, market uncertainty, and too many sellers flooding the scene, the watch market was hit with what they're calling its correction phase. Things are cooling down after all that craziness. You've probably noticed how the market has been all over the place lately. It's been quite the roller coaster ride, right? Let's dive into why this is so fascinating. So picture this. There was like this huge craze around flipping Rolex watches. People were snatching them up, not just to wear, but also hoping to cash in on the craze. Waiting lists were ridiculously long, and the prices you could sell them for were sky high. It was like the Wild West in the world of watches. Now, why did all of this happen, you ask? Well, it was a mix of factors. From interest rates to the fear of missing out, it was the perfect storm. And then, COVID-19 hit, leaving its mark on pretty much everyone. With the pandemic expected to stick around for a while, getting economies and people's budgets back to normal wouldn't be a walk in the park. And guess what? Rolex was thriving amidst all this chaos. Here's the scoop. The value of gold became crucial in this scenario. Rolex used tons of high-quality gold to craft their watches. And here's the thing. Gold tends to do well when the economy isn't doing well. It's been true during wars, recessions, depressions, and tough economic situations. Even during the past flu pandemics in 1918 and 1968, the price of gold went up. So, when most countries were struggling with their economies, impacting things like stocks, bonds, forex trading, and other investments, gold in some markets stayed strong and even thrived. It's kind of like the golden lining amid economic storms. You know, it's interesting to think about why people still had their eyes on gold Rolex watches even during a pandemic. Well, there was this craving for assets that stood strong when times were tough. While some investors could afford to hang on to their investments for another year, others couldn't bear the losses and opted to sell them off swiftly. That's where gold jewelry, including those classy gold Rolex watches, come into play. History showed that these watches held their value and often increased in worth over the next year or so. It was a safer bet than watching their other assets lose value without any guarantee of bouncing back after the crisis. But it's not just about gold's record of performing well during economic hardships. It's also about the perception that gold, in general, is always valuable. Now, consider how the average person views Rolex watches. Even those who aren't watch enthusiasts recognize the name Rolex. To them, Rolex means quality and value. In a time when everything felt uncertain, having a Rolex watch was like possessing a symbol of strength and reliability, even in a crisis. After all, the Rolex brand has weathered world wars and other pandemics. Now, let's talk about those interest rates we mentioned earlier. One of the strategies many countries used to stabilize their economies during the pandemic was capping interest rates. This included the rates you'd pay when borrowing money to buy things. Depending on where you lived, these limits allowed you to buy a Rolex. Getting a loan, especially to invest in something likely to become more valuable, was a smart move back then. It was like seizing an opportunity in economic uncertainty. You won't believe how lenders viewed loans used to buy Rolex watches during the pandemic. They saw them as less risky, which meant they offered better interest rates. If you had the means, it was a golden opportunity to dive into this kind of investment. But what set the stage for this frenzy was the incredible shift in people's behavior during those times. The speed at which consumer behavior transformed was mind-blowing. Picture this. Folks who craved a touch of luxury but couldn't experience it in person turned to online shopping in a big way. They flocked to internet marketplaces, creating a massive demand, especially for luxury items like Rolex watches. 
and to add fuel to the fire, there were production constraints because companies like Rolex had to halt operations to ensure everyone's safety temporarily. That only intensified the demand. A major driving force behind this madness was the fear of missing out. But from an economic perspective, those super low interest rates were the primary factor causing all this disruption. Now, it's crucial to grasp just how significant historically low interest rates are in the current scenario. To safeguard against the worldwide economic downturn, central banks worldwide decided to lower interest rates. The luxury watch industry, Rolex included, wasn't spared from the effect of this important and well-intentioned move. It created this perfect storm where borrowing to invest in items like Rolex watches became incredibly attractive due to the favorable interest rates, triggering a surge in demand and reshaping how people shopped. It was a whirlwind of change that truly redefined the market dynamics during those times. We're in a new era, grappling with rising inflation and adjusting interest rates. While we've made some progress, there's still work to be done. Luxury watch prices are beginning to reflect these changes, and naturally, their prices are decreasing. It's a classic case of what goes up must come down, and the same principle applies to high-end watches when demand decreases. But here's where it gets interesting. Enter the concept of price arbitrage, adding another layer to this complex situation. The basic idea behind price arbitrage is taking advantage of price differences in different markets. In simpler terms, it's about buying a lower price in one market and selling it for a higher price in another. What's fascinating is how this concept was applied in a new way in the Rolex industry. During the pandemic, Rolex watches were highly sought after because they were expected to increase in value over time. That higher demand led to longer waiting lists. Here's how it played out. Imagine someone buys a Rolex from an official store at the regular price and then sells it in the secondary market, where many people are eager to buy it. The profit comes from the price difference between the two markets. As long as there's demand for Rolex watches in the secondary market, this deal is pretty secure. However, when Rolex prices start to decline, things change. The allure of this investment method diminishes because there's now a risk of losing money. It's like a delicate balancing act in luxury watches, where market dynamics and investor strategies continually evolve in response to changing economic conditions. Today, the dynamics of the market are truly intriguing. We're witnessing some remarkable shifts, especially in luxury watches. Models like the Datejust, which once had lengthy waiting lists, suddenly become readily available for immediate purchase in a shop in Las Vegas. This signaled a downward trend in Rolex prices, even though certain models like the Cosmograph Daytona and limited editions continue to fetch high prices. The message was clear. Rolex prices were on the decline. What's concerning is that we've yet to experience the full impact of the economic crisis, and that's a significant worry. Even without a major economic downturn, Rolex prices have been dropping significantly. History teaches us that during tough economic times, price declines might be even more substantial. That could discourage buyers and sellers from engaging in the market. The factors shaping these dramatic price changes in the watch market, especially in the luxury segment during the pandemic, are multifaceted. Currently, low interest rates and the concept of arbitrage played pivotal roles. However, it was also about how people behaved. The fear of missing out and the challenges in producing enough watches further complicated the situation. It's a complex interplay of market forces, investor behavior, and supply chain issues that have contributed to the fascinating and ever-changing landscape of the luxury watch market. Make sure to stay informed, whether you're a flipper changing your strategy or a buyer